What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Mech Warrior 5. This game has become my addiction over the course of the last X weeks. I've dumped an absurd amount of hours into it as you may have no doubt seen from the title of this video and frankly I feel like it's only fair that I share that addiction with all of you. Now Mech Warrior is one of those things that I've been into since I was a kid. In fact I think, I was thinking about it for the last couple days, I think Mech Warrior may be one of the first introductions that I ever had to adult sci-fi. I got Mech Warrior 2. It came with a computer when I was a kid that my dad got for his office and I ended up playing it whenever my parents were gone because they said that I couldn't play it because it had language in it. But anyways, I ended up playing it all the time every time they left the house because I was kind of a latchkey kid anyways. And so I played Mech Warrior 2 until my eyes bled. Okay, maybe not that much, but I've been really, really into Mech Warrior and Battletech ever since. Now, Mech Warrior 5. This game is not new. You're probably asking me why I'm showing it off right now. Well, there is an indie curve to this whole thing. Mech Warrior 5 released to kind of like a resounding plop when it came out. The game was really watered down. It was really simple. In a lot of ways, I felt like it was inferior to Mech Warrior 4. Uh, in order to be accessible, they really removed a lot of the customization and interesting tinkering that you could do with your mechs in the vanilla version. But since then, the developers have put out three DLCs, and on top of that, they opened it up to the Steam Workshop. And what that meant is a whole bunch of industrious people that really love Mech Warrior were able to sit down and create a suite of mods that turn this into basically the Mech Warrior game of your dreams if you're willing to mod it and fiddle with it a little bit. And if you're playing Mech Warrior, you should probably be ready to tinker. That's like 90% of the reason why I play Mech Warrior, so I don't mind tinkering with mods while I'm tinkering with my mechs. So I'm going to dive on in today because I felt like you guys really enjoyed the Stalker video when I did that video with like 240 mods installed through Gamma or whatever. And I figured I'll show you my highly modded Mech Warrior 5 and see if it's something that you are interested in. So, let's dive on in. What exactly is Mech Warrior 5? Mech Warrior 5 is a sandbox space mercenary game where society has basically ended up in a position where everybody uses big giant robots in order to smash the bejesus out of one another in order to settle their disputes. It takes place on this giant galactic map right here. All of those colors are the factions. There was a big civil war, so basically capitalism won. NATO won the Cold War and unified the entire planet under one kind of new world order and then went to the stars. And as they got further and further and further out, uh, people out on the fringe, it took them a long time to communicate with Earth. So they got cranky about the fact that they weren't being represented properly. Big giant civil war in a nutshell. And you end up with this map right here. Uh, which is very much kind of Dune inspired, I think. It's basically space feudalism with a nice little, with a nice little tinge of crony capitalism in there. So capitalism has taken over the galaxy and five families of nobles basically run everything in the inner core, effectively. You've got like House Steiner, you've got House Corita. Uh, these guys are basically kind of like Teutonic Knights in space. These guys are Samurai in space. Uh, you've got, I think this is Davian over here. And so Davian and Merrick are kind of similar. They're sort of like, well, one of them is Austro-Hungarian knights in space feudalism. The other one is kind of like Anglo-French feudalism in space. And then you've got House Lao right here, which is basically, they, well, House Lao has had a bunch of rewrites. But anyways, uh, they're the Capellans and everybody just likes to beat up on House Lao because somehow in a universe full of grimdark bad guys, they managed to be even worse than all the other bad guys, like 90% of the time. And so anyways, this is one of those settings that I think is really accessible for Warhammer 40k fans that maybe want to move away from the hobby. Uh, Battletech and Mech Warrior, pretty dark, pretty cynical, lots of bad things happening, but there is some chivalry in there and there's some light and there are good guys and there are people trying to do the right thing. And so anyways, uh, very much sort of like realistic, real politic happening in between all these factions as they vie for sort of control of the area. And of course, it doesn't end there. There's outer areas too, in the fringe. Uh, you got like the Magistry of Canopus down here, which is a smaller faction. I think over here, you've got like the Torian Concordat. Over here, you've got the Circus Pirates or whatever they're called. Uh, there, There's lots and lots of stuff to take in. This game has lore that's been written back to the 80s. And so if you're trying to play catch up with Mech Warrior, it's gonna take you a little bit, but it is a very, very fun game. Uh, so what's gonna happen is I run a mercenary company. 
We take jobs. Those jobs give us money so that we can keep upgrading our mechs and taking more jobs. There's storylines. There's DLC storylines. There's loads and loads of weapons and customization to do. I'll give you my mod list at the end of the video just because that makes things easier because somebody can timestamp it. But for the sake of uh, for the sake of argument, why do I like Mech Warrior so much? Well, let's jump into a mission and I'll show you. Now I've taken the time to fly across the galaxy and find you guys a good mission to really introduce you to the mayhem that is modded Mech Warrior. But before we really get into the cockpit and we start firing some missiles and whatnot, let me introduce you to my team. So that's my mech. It's called an Archer. You use it to bombard enemies from a long ways away with long range missiles. This is my Wolverine right here. Wolverine is a brawler. This is my Thunderbolt, and this is my Heroic Phoenix Hawk right here, which is actually quite good. Uh, so these guys are going to be our main frontline guys that are brawling it up with the enemy. He's going to be skirmishing a little bit. I'm going to be firing missiles from the backfield, trying to deal some damage, make some explosions, make people feel the intergalactic thunder. I've got some backup mechs too. This game has over 300 mechs and variants of mechs. For you to play around with they are all highly customizable every single mech if you have the same mods that i have which i'll give you a list of at the end of the video has its own perks and quirks that are randomly generated when you buy the mech uh, so that's little things like you know the sensor system was installed particularly well so you get bonus sensor distance or the right arm actuator was installed kind of by somebody that was a bit of a slouch so it's got less hp or you rotate at the hip a little bit faster or slower because it hasn't or has been maintained properly. All of your mechs have their own sort of RimWorld character style perks that you got to get used to as you play the game. On top of that, you've also got your barracks over here with all of my wingmen. Uh, wingmen, they also level up with the mods that I have, and they also have RimWorld style traits based on good things and bad things that happen to them. They may develop certain quirks that make them worse in combat, or they may get other ideals that make them better in combat. Good stuff, and you can always hire more of them in other systems, too. But anyways, let's dive on into a fight, shall we? So this map's got something that I think's gonna be a little bit of fun. It's a, uh, battlefield. Con These battlefield contracts, they're like my favorite. They come from a mod that I have that completely rebuilds the entire mission system to make them more immersive and interesting. And so anyways, these battlefield contracts I think are a really good introduction to the setting. Now every time you take a mission in this game, based on how famous your mercenary company is and how much the faction that you're working for likes you, in this case the Torian Concordat, uh, you get negotiation points. You can spend those negotiation points in order to get more money for the mission, get more salvage for the mission, because in lore, uh, mercenaries are basically, by law, ascribed a certain amount of salvage for any mission that they participate in, because this is kind of like Warhammer 40k. They don't really make new technology anymore. They do, but they don't. But technology has largely been lost, and so salvaging parts is effectively how you replace your damages and stuff like that, uh, since you can't just up and, you know, jump on space Amazon Prime and have it delivered. We can also get damage coverage. That's just insurance in case we get absolutely cinnamon toast shrekt. Uh, we can also get airstrike support, just in case you like to call in the daisy cutters and blow up big swaths of the battlefield. For right now, uh, since we are not really getting a whole lot out of this mission, I'm just doing this mission with a faction that I don't normally work with. Uh, in order to show you guys combat, we'll just take all the salvage for right now. Let's dive on in. So all my pilots are set up. We're a little bit over tonnage, but I'm okay with that situation. I find it to be, it's better to be over tonnage than under tonnage. This is a holdover from the tabletop game that this is based on. Uh, in order, it's kind of like the point buy system in Warhammer 40k. Uh, everything has a value in Battletech in terms of weight, and that's how you keep the fights kind of even when you play on the tabletop war game. Uh, they keep it inside the video game here, though, too. We're only five tons overweight, so we're going to get a little bit cut off of our paycheck and a little bit cut off of our salvage. But, like, I'm honestly not that upset about it. I just want to robo-punch people in the face. So let's do it. So in the case of this mission... There is a big war going on between two factions. Oh no, this is a different type of mission. Okay, so for this mission what we have to do is we have to stay and hold. The war zone, I think, is what I was thinking of. I don't know, it messed with the names. It said this one was a battlefield, so I thought this was the one where it was going to be like a 30v30. And it was absolutely chaos, but I haven't super gotten used to the nomenclature yet. This will still be fun. Uh, we've got to go over to this point over here, and we've got to hold for as long as possible. The longer we hold, the more money we get paid. This is my archer right here. You can press the V key at any time and it'll put you in third person mode, but real mech warriors go from the saddle. 
I only use third person mode when I'm stepping on buildings in order to more properly commit war crimes, but for the majority of this playthrough, I'm going to be inside my mech leading from the cockpit. Uh, we need to get to this point over here, Nav Alpha, there we go, and it looks like we've got 15 enemies that are going to be coming on in to scrum with us. So let's give them a little bit of a light show, shall we? Uh, it looks like we got a couple of tanks coming in from that side. It looks like we got a tank coming in from that side over there. You can give your wingmen orders, although with the mods I have running, their AI is actually pretty decent. And if you allow them to just free fight, they'll do a reasonably okay job. They're nowhere near as good as like a normal human pilot, but they do their best. Uh, let's go ahead and lock onto him, and let's feed him some missiles, shall we? There's the missiles away. Unfortunately, the missiles did not kill him because that is a chunky boy of a tank. However, the second attempt at murder took, so that's fine. If at first you don't succeed, release another 30 high-powered missiles with explosive warheads. That's how I live my life. I don't know how you live your life, but that's how I live mine. It's a rule to remember, especially when driving on the 80. All right, so we got a drop ship coming in over there. Okay, everybody stick with me. It's about to get hot and spicy up in chill. Uh, let's go ahead and take out that tank real quick. There we go, tank is down. And over on this side, we got a bunch of mechs what just got dropped in. We've got a dragon. We've got a, what is that? A grasshopper. All right, grasshopper is priority target. That's the most dangerous mech on the field. If you're looking in the top right-hand corner, you'll see the health of the mech that we are currently shooting at. Uh, the outline is basically how much armor plating he has left, and the inner part is his componentry, and he is already dead. This is a dragon over here. This is basically a useless, outdated, terrible mech that I'm not scared of at all, which is why I opted to ignore it. One of the cool things about Mech Warrior and Battletech lore is that there are mechs that are in the game that are objectively bad. Now, in any other setting, you'd be like, that's terrible balance. Why would they do that? But in Mech Warrior, with corporate inefficiency, are we trying to battle fight right now, bro? I'll punch you in the face. I think he wants to battle fight me, dude. I had to knock, I had to feed him up a cold two-piece real quick, because you can throw these hands in your mech if you get too close. So anyways, I fed him that little one too, you know what I mean? I called up Colonel Sanders and I was like, yo, give me that extra, give me that extra, extra crispy two-piece, and if you can't do it, I'll go to Popeyes. All right, but as I was saying, in Mech Warrior, there are mechs that are objectively bad. Just like in real life, there are cars that are objectively bad due to bad manufacturing or flaws. Same thing happens here. Uh, there are companies that go out of business all the time in the Mech Warrior setting because they put all their chips in the basket of like manufacturing a mech for a war zone, and it turns out to be just egregiously terrible. And like militaries order a couple million of them, and they just sit around in warehouses, and eventually some pirate ends up with them, or some you know mercenary ends up with it. And honestly, in a universe with 70 foot tall mechs. It kind of feels like it's better to have a bad death robot than no death robot at all, especially when everybody else has a death robot. We've got a dervish over here. Oh, look at that. He went critical. Nice little beautiful nuclear explosion right there. That's how I like my enemies to die in nuclear fire. Let's go ahead and pull it all together. We're going to go ahead and hit this dervish right here. Everybody get on it. Let's get a nice little engagement popping off. We'll work our way through the smoke and the thunder over here. Is he still alive or is he just blocked by the smoke screen? He is blocked by the smoky screen. We'll give him a little bit of that right there. Uh, the cockpit is in the head of most mechs, so you kind of want to aim for headshots if you're trying to kill somebody quickly, but it's not really hugely necessary. I'm inside my optimal range right now. There we go. Let's feed him one of those. And there's another kill. Let's bring this over here. We'll finish off this dervish on this side. Let's feed him up some missiles. Sir, how would you like some explosive warheads? That's right, feel it, taste it, minty, fresh. Not too bad, we're actually soaking this guy pretty good. He is returning fire, which kind of sucks, but he died first, and that's all that matters in combat. All right, we got six more contacts coming on in. There is no guarantee that they're gonna be tanks, planes, anything like that. It may be more mechs, so let's get ourselves settled on in. But yeah, I like the fact that bad mechs are in Mech Warrior. It makes the universe feel more realistic. You know, somebody's got to make the Pontiac Sunfire of mechs. There's no way around it. Uh, they're landing on the outside of the wall. We have flight vehicles coming on in. Let's light them up. God, I hope my missiles don't hit the dropship. All right. Their Air Force has been knocked out of the sky. They do have one heavy mech, and it's a Charger. Charger's kind of a trash bag mech, so I'm not that worried about it. 
it's not very good. And so I feel no fear in my heart. So I'm just going to march on out here like a madman and just sort of sorty with him for a minute. There we go. Give him a couple missiles right there. Other things on my HUD that you should be aware of at the bottom, there is a radar. And to the left of the radar is my velocity, my throttle. To the right of the radar is how much heat I've built up inside the core of my mech. If it goes too high, uh, you will overheat and your mech will shut down like an overtaxed CPU. You'll hit that T-junction. However, there is also a way for you to disable that so you can keep shooting until your reactor melts down. But I wouldn't recommend it. It's kind of a bad plan. Let's see here. We got a blackjack on this side. Sure. There we go. He felt that one in the cockpit a little bit. Didn't really hurt his cockpit too much, but give him a little bit more. Ooh, that shoulder's about to go there, buddy. You got a, a real soft shoulder on one side. It'd be a shame... Oh, I tried to punch it. I wanted to knock his arm off with a punch. It makes me... F oh, he ejected. Okay, fair enough. Bye-bye. And then we've got one Centurion left. And now the Centurion has been vanquished. If we want to, we can hang out here and keep on killing enemy invaders. And we get like 30 grand per enemy we kill. But you've been introduced to Mech Warriors, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just evac real fast over at my Leopard Drop Point. We do have enemies coming on in but they're kind of far out. I think I'll get to the evac before they close with us, so I don't even think I should start skirmishing. I do have 1,500 missiles left, though. Oh, somebody's shooting at me. Oh, yeah, there's an Igor up in the sky. Igor up in the sky. His autocannons want me to die. All right, let's go over this way, and we will get the hell on out of here before we pick up any more attrition in this little hoedown. Farewell, Space Desert. I hope you enjoyed the charcoaly burn that I have laid upon thy surface for the purposes of profit. See you later. So, we got a little bit of XP there. Didn't make much money because this is a new introduction to a faction. But we did get salvage. And so one of the things my mods do here is they allow us to actually get individual pieces of mechs. In the vanilla version of the game, you have to buy the whole mech. Which means, really, you've got to dedicate, like, all of your salvage to getting one mech at the end of combat. Whereas with the mod that I currently have running called Yet Another Mech Lab, you can like grab one piece of a mech and then get a bunch of weapons down here at the bottom of the list. And you can kind of put things together slowly. For now, I'll probably take the big ticket items. So we'll take the charger part. And we will take a dragon part. And then we'll go on down to the bottom. And is there anything here that I find to be extra sensual? Not really. There's nothing here that I truly well want. So I'll just take an LRM pack. All right, and so we really didn't actually take that much damage during that fight. It went pretty well for us. I feel like the orchestration went pretty good. So we'll repair up all the mechs. Normally, you don't want to do this. Repairing your mechs inside of a combat zone costs a lot more money and takes a lot more time. But for the purposes of expediency and just keeping the video flowing and trying to get you guys as excited about Mech Warrior 5 modded as I possibly can, I'm just going to do it anyways. I'm going to damn the consequences. So what do you do with the money and the salvage that you just earned? Now, with the money and the salvage that I just earned, uh, you can go to Salvage Assembly and you can build the mechs if you can get enough pieces of them. You can sell the pieces from right here if you want to for a nice little cash money cheddar stack Gouda Guap, you know, exchange. So we made like an extra 500 grand right there. Uh, with your money, you can buy parts for your mechs and you can change their loadout. So, for example, if you take a look at my personal archer, this is the simplified way to look at my archer. And basically, the segments of your mech all have hard points where you can put weapons. So I've got two launchers that fire 15 long-range missiles in a stream on each shoulder. And then I've got four medium lasers, two in my torso, so i got a couple ween lasers. And then I've also got lasers on my arms. However, if you click this button right here... Ah, did you hear the sound of all the EVE Online players in the audience getting ridiculously excited through the power of the internet? Uh, this is the complicated way to look at everything. And this is where you can see, like, actual hard points. And this is all from a mod right here. The vanilla game, you can't really do much customization. But with the mods that I have running, you can change the sensor array, you can change your targeting systems, you can change your life support, you can change your cockpit, you can change your armor type, your structure, your engine, your gyros. Uh, you can fiddle with 
anything to your heart's desire that you absolutely well want to. And that costs money. Every single thing that you do here has to be done by your onboard mechanic. And he's got to acquire things in order to do it. And he's got to bill you for man hours and whatnot. Uh, you've got a list of all my gear over here on the left. You can also buy directly from the market if there's something you need to throw in there real fast, but you don't have it on you right now. And then the other thing you can do is you can buy new mechs if you don't want to build them. Every single system will have mechs in it, but you'll probably have the best luck finding fresh, pristine mechs. If you go to one of these areas that's connected with a white line, these are industrial production chains of planets right here, which means that they have all the facilities to repair, refurbish, assemble, manufacture, load out, and basically equip mechs. And so when you want to do some serious shopping, these are the places that you want to go. Right now I'm a little bit low on money because I just went on a spend fest, and this is like my 30th attempt at recording this video, and I spent all my money on the last attempt at recording this video. Womp, womp, womp. So anyways, can't really do that for you right now. But maybe, just maybe, if we make enough money, I might be able to. I've decided to take a little trip to the next system over because all the missions here are for factions that I don't want to work with. I've basically made the independent corporations and House Lao my whipping boy for this entire- I mean, it's just what you do, okay? Ask any mech warrior player who they're gonna bully and all of them are gonna say independents and capellans, man. And like, it's like the go-to and if it's not them, it's Karita. I don't know. I decided this time I was gonna be friends with the Space Samurai. Uh, let's see what missions are available in this system. What do we have here? We have a battleground contract against House Merrick. That'll be pretty intense. You guys need- you guys deserve to see some intense combat. I'm gonna give you guys the intense combat, even though I'm trying to build up my reputation with Merrick. I'm gonna- I'm gonna throw just for you, alright? This is a little- this is a little something special from me to you. I'm giving up millions of imaginary dollars right now. Just because I love you that much, audience. Just because I want you to love Mech Warrior the way that I love Mech Warrior, and I want you to see the chaos. And you wanna you wanna see me unload on a field of enemies. Alright, here we go. Eliminate all hostiles. I think I can help out with that. I think I can be your Huckleberry. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, we'll get our mechs all nice and deployed. I love this immersive uh dropship animation you get every single time you go into a mission. Like, I've been playing Mech Warrior for a long time, though. I love Mech Warrior. It's one of those settings that, it's one of the few things I've ever loved on the same level as Warhammer 40k. And so I'm always excited, especially now that the game is so infinitely moddable and feeling so, oh boy. Okay, we got a lot of contacts. We're gonna need to be soft and delicate about the way we approach this battlefield. What I would like to do is I would like to turn a flank. God, we're like on the ultimate rust planet, dude. You take one wrong step and everybody you know gets tetanus simultaneously across the galaxy. Uh, it's not much better in night vision, unfortunately, so I think we're just going to have to run it this way. Luckily, it's not a very hot planet, so that's good. We don't have to worry about any, like, hot in here, take off your clothes Nelly situations while we're in the neighborhood. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to launch at this flea right here. And I want to turn a flank. I don't want to end up in the middle of this fight. Basically, I want to turn a flank and then push it back around, sort of like how water swirls around a toilet bowl. That's what I'm trying to do right now on the battlefield, because getting surrounded is just the worst thing ever in these missions. All right, so what am I looking at here? Okay, he's over there. Go ahead and give him some missiles. Feed him up a little bit. He's a light mech. He doesn't even deserve to be here. Uh, this, is, this is the hallmark example of somebody that brought piss to a shit fight. Uh, he's a flea. A flea, as you might have guessed from the name of the mech, is a very, very, very tiny mech. Like, one of the smaller ones you can get. Uh, and so anyways, it's gonna die. Uh, this centurion over here, I think, wants the beef. Let's cook it up for him on the skillet. Yeah, how do you like that right there? Have fun on the ground. Have fun in the loading screen, bro. Uh, leg is off the flea. Go ahead and finish it off, boys. And then let's take a look here. What else is going on? We got another engagement coming from this side and a griffin. I think it's a good idea to probably swirl that way. Uh, he is pretty wounded already, so easy sortie to win. Uh, we got a warhammer over here, actually. A warhammer mech is actually a pretty tough mech. So we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna hit him first. He's actually like a threat. You dead yet? I need you to be dead. Please be dead. There we go. We've also got a quick draw over there. Quick draw is much less of a threat. 
quick draw is kind of one of those weird quirky mechs that I was talking about earlier. It's like somewhat okay, but it's not that great. Like, it'll work in a pinch, but there's better stuff than a quick draw. Uh, there is a cicada over here. The cicada is a garbage dumpster, a terrible version of a Jenner. It's really just a Jenner, but crappier. And now it's dead. So I have alleviated its crappiness. We have the Air Force coming on in right now. There we go. They're all listening to Highway to the Danger Zone. They've got their aviators on. They're looking fresh, and now they're going to die. Take that. Go to sleep, Iceman. This is not the place for you. Uh, let's go ahead and continue working our way around the battlefield. Things are kicking off, man. They got the orbital guns firing right now. Everything's on fire. We got some tanks over here trying to do little Scooty Boy tread actions. Okay. Let's go ahead and see how this whole thing plays out. Um, we should probably help with this. These two are going to get starched if they fight that entire lance right there. A lance is four mechs for people that have never seen Mech Warrior before. Four mechs is a team called a lance. And then from there, you have, like, battalions, brigades, stuff like that. Uh, we got a rifleman over there. Rifleman is dangerous, but riflemen have notoriously paper-thin armor. And so he's kind of a glass cannon. So he shouldn't be a problem that remains for long. There we go. Dervish over here, actually. Yeah, get the dervish, I guess. Oh, there's a tank over there. Oh, my God. Things are happening. I am overstimulated. I feel alive. Let's push the button till it goes click. There we go. Laser you a little bit right in the mecha booby. There we go. Take a nice little mecha nap. Uh, we've got a SRM pod tank over there. We run the risk of getting surrounded right now in this position. And I am afeard. I'm getting a little bit hot up here in the cockpit. Unfortunately, my swamp cooler that I've got hanging out the window isn't working. So, like, today we've just got to accept that we're going to sweat a little bit inside of our flight suit. There we go. Another one bites the dust. We got a javelin over there. Okay, a little javelin. Shouldn't take me more than a couple volleys to kill him. These little poor javelins, dude. He sh there we go. He shouldn't be on this battlefield. We got a spider right there that's overextending himself, as spiders always seem to do. Spiders are basically fast, high-speed assassination mechs uh, used for kind of like hit-and-run guerrilla tactics. Uh, they are not accustomed to the rigors of actual combat, but for some reason the AI likes to deploy them, man. I don't know. Let's go ahead and kill you real quick. You're inside my missile range, though. It makes me irate when I'm not able to shoot you with missiles, brother. There we go. Thank you for assuaging my concerns. Oh, you're still alive? I thought you died. There we go. Now you're dead. Somebody else stole my kill, and I feel a little bit guilty about it, but like... We have going on over here a Phoenix Hawk. Phoenix Hawk is okay. It's not a bad mech. It's definitely a solid middle range mech. Weighing in at 45 tons with a little Gundam laser gun. But no, the uh, I, I think that the Phoenix Hawk is actually a mean little skirmisher. Ooh, okay. I love all the little chat dialogues and shout outs and things that happen in combat too. It's like we're all in a Discord chat room trying to murder each other. What could be more intimate? Uh, let's go off to the right, and dude, I cannot wait to get off this planet. I can feel my jaw getting stiff already. Why are we fighting over this place? We should just make like a wall around it and forget about it. This place sucks, dude. Like, is there is there anything here that doesn't look like the inside of like a Jawa sand crawler? Good God. There we go. Another mission knocked out. We made two million dollar dues not bad. I decided to round up. Makes me happier to round up. I do want a Warhammer. I may actually try to assemble a Warhammer. They do have engine cores in here, though. I can only get two pieces of the Warhammer. It's upsetting. I'll take the engine. What equipment did they have? Did they have anything good? Not really. Not really. Okay, so we will take a piece of a Warhammer. We've got two points left to buy with. I will probably just take one of these LRM racks. Why not? I don't care, dude. Just spin the spin the roulette wheel and take what you take. You know what I mean? Uh, I will more than likely jump on into the equipment market, and I will probably sell that core because I don't think I need it. I have two of them. 
Okay, I don't know where I got two of them from, but sure, I'll take a $1.5 million advance on my paycheck. That sounds fantastic. Now, what kind of things are there to do in this game outside of the randomly generated missions? Well, there's also jobs, which are basically side fetch quests, like in an MMO form. Uh, they'll ask you to go to a place and find a thing on a battlefield, bring it back, collect a certain number of weapons in order to supply arms dealers. Uh, they will ask you to collect mechs. They will ask you to collect... Uh, destroy mechs, they will ask you to kill tanks. These are basically side objectives right here, and when you do that, your operations level levels up. These are aftermarket mods that function independently. If we go back to our battle mechs here and we go to the loadout menu, and you take a look, uh, there's probably nowhere you can see here where you slot those in. But actually, every single mech also has a second tab of aftermarket upgrades. Uh, these are non-standard software and hardware modifications that you are making to your mech in order to make it kind of like the Millennium Falcon. It might spark a little bit more, but it's got a little bit of magic up under the hood. And so as you do those side missions, you level up various aspects of your mercenary companies. Oh, I don't know. Professionalities, I guess. You become an equipment collector, a mech collector, and as you do that, it unlocks new aftermarket things you can put on your mech. Don't disregard these. These are very, very powerful. Like, th once you get to the end of the chain, these are really good, and you want to have them on your mechs because they make your mechs, like, flatly deal 15% more damage or flatly fire 15% faster or flatly move 15% faster. Like, the, the end game aftermarket software and hard hardware mods are dope like they that they're really what make your mech special on top of that uh, you may have noticed that all the equipment i've been showing you has little pips on it that's because there are five tiers of equipment from tier zero to tier five and you can upgrade these things right here uh, so normally you have to wait for them to random drop in vanilla but that's really really rare and hard to come by and accumulating like you know six SB medium lasers is going to take you forever. So what they've done with the mods that I have is that you can upgrade your stuff, which is actually really, really cool as well. So if you go to this weapon upgrades tab right here in the battle mechs tab, you can actually combine weapons. So if you have like three or four of a lower tier, you can combine it to make a higher tier. And I think this is a really great feature that should have been included in the base game. But the fact that it's been modded on in uh, makes it perfectly fine by me. Let's go ahead and catch ourselves another mission out here, see if there's any more trouble to get involved with. And then I'll take you on a little bit of a shopping spree. Because I like Mech Warrior so much, I'm going to make this video a little tiny bit longer. And we've got a duel over here. Honor duels are one of the new mission types that has been added. Like I said, this is space feudalism. So people are always challenging each other to duels in their mechs because they see themselves as knights and their honor has been impugned. And so we've got somebody over here that wants us to act as their second because they are not a mech warrior pilot, but they were challenged to a duel. And so we have agreed to fight in their stead and effectively be their champion, be it for like a trial or be it for some you know, for some conflict that has arisen between nobles, uh, we've been asked to do it. It looks like here. Oh, apparently it was a duel that was requested against us specifically because we've been working for House Davian and we've become honored heroes of their faction. So somebody thinks they can take us. This isn't even me fighting as somebody's second. This is somebody just wants to fight me. Fair enough. I have been really rough on the independents. If I was an independent, I would probably want to duel me too. Like, let's be fair here. Uh, so let's go ahead and take the duel. Uh, there's also an 8v8 duel. I like those missions very much. Those are a lot of fun as well. Ooh, we get a salvage bonus? Okay, now we're cooking with fire out here. All right, now we, now we, got, now we got a little bit of the old charcoal. The All right. Scrap gusts. Beautiful. In we go. Let's get this conflict. Oh, yeah, look at that. We're still on this toenail of a planet. You guys did this. We went to a completely different system. You guys did this to multiple planets? I feel like you guys, ever since we discovered space travel, you guys have been really willy-nilly. Like, look at the size of this pile. Can I light it on fire? Look at this pile of tires right here. Like, did this used to be somewhere? Like, was one of these buildings a Dave and Buster's? Where's the, Char where's the Charles Entertainment cheese at? Oh, yeah. Look at that. They're landing. Oh, and apparently it's a 4v8 because more people have jumped in. So pirates don't like me very much. 
So they sent a bunch of assassins to kill me in the middle of the mission. This is actually a procedural development that was not supposed to happen. So it looks like they've actually weighed the odds in their favor by bringing four extra mechs. Oh no, they're fighting each other. Okay, I'm fine with that then. They don't like each other. Oh, nice dude! Okay, we lucked out. The assassins have been attacked by the other person that we're supposed to be dueling. So I don't think anybody's going to be happy with the way this goes. Uh, I'm just going to line up back here like a weenie. And just kind of like launch missiles at him while he's busy with somebody else. Because that's the benefit of being a missile boat. Is that you just get to be an opportunistic jerk. Uh, there is a Zeus over there. That kind of concerns me. Uh, I think this guy wants the smoke right here. He's actually co he's trying to buck up on us, man. Fair enough. Dude, you should have moved. I didn't even have a target lock. You could have dodged that entire salvo. I'm not going to send my team in to get chopped into sm into scrap if I don't have to. I'm just going to kind of like wait back here and let them chew on each other for a minute. And then we'll sweep in and kill the survivors. Uh, I am going to kill that Zeus though sooner rather than later. Because that Zeus is actually a pretty heavy mech that can deal a lot of damage. I think the Zeus is an 80 tonner. So it's like on the borderline of heavy and assault mechs. Uh, mechs in Mech Warrior 5, they go up to 100 tons. 100 tons are considered the heaviest of the assault mechs. 60 to 80 are heavy mechs. 40 to 60 are mediums. Okay, so now we need to actually get involved in the fight because they've noticed me. They see me over here hiding in my giant pile of scrap toenails. We are running a little bit crispy right now. Is that going to overheat me? Oh no, it overheated me. I got, I got greedy, bro. Oh, but I killed him. See, it doesn't matter if you overheat when the other guy dies the moment that you overheat yourself. That's really the secret. That trebuchet is trying to brawl with me right now. So they built themselves a close range treb. Gotcha. Uh, go ahead and get on the treb, please, boys. Go ahead and chop them up. Let them have it. We have the numerical advantage. They actually seem to have done quite a number on one another. That's fine by me. The easier the paycheck, the happier I am. Uh, trebuchet, nice little cockpit hit right there, but he's basically out of weapons since both of his arms are off. Oh, that guy's got an axe! Eh. Run away! Is he behind me? Uh, there are melee weapons in this game, in case you didn't know. And they really, really, really hurt. I would advise you not to get hit with melee weapons. That would be my advice, is that if you gotta get hit by something, make sure that it's not a giant three-story axe. I would like your giant three-story axe to go away. He just jumped in on my homie right there. I don't like that. Man, he armored the hell out of his axe arm. It does not want to come off. Oh, okay. All right, he's jumping away. That's fine. He probably could have hit me right there, but, you know. Why do things effectively or efficiently? Good night, sweet prince. Uh, so what are you doing over here? What are you? Oh, you're getting murdered. All right. Well, have fun getting slumped. Hope you enjoy your new pillow. It's made out of tires. So now that we're out of that mission, it's probably time for me to show you all the mods that I have installed. So we made $2 million right there. That's not bad. Two pieces of a Zeus. I think I already have a Zeus. Don't I? I think I have a Zeus already. I don't think I need Zeus Deuce. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll... Well, I mean, I guess I can just sell it for parts. It is valuable. Sure. Sounds like a plan. Let me find something cheap that I can take. Ooh... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They've got high tier short burst lasers. These are really rare. I want those. Normally I would take the mech parts, but those are actually quite rare. You don't see them come up very often. So I'll go ahead and snag them. Uh, so what kind of stuff can you do in this game? Like what can you put on your mech? There's auto cannons, rotary cannons, machine guns, flamethrowers, axes, swords, maces, lasers. Uh, and, like, there's all kinds of goodies. There's long tom artillery. Just in case you want to be like an actual Gustav gun that just hangs out three kilometers from the battle and rains down hellfire on people. I mean, there's all kinds of things that go into this game. And how did I get there? Well, let me show you. 
So back on the main screen, uh, I'll show you my mods now. And so hopefully somebody will timestamp this for you. Uh, but I'm running a bunch of different mods. The top one right here is disabled. It's called tonnage, no tonnage limit. It gets rid of the tonnage limit on missions. I was doing a stream where I was role-playing Clan Steiner. And so any, or I'm sorry, House Steiner. I don't know why I've got the clans on the brain. I don't know, must be the leather man thongs. Anyways, uh, I've got pilot overhaul. That's the mod that makes it so that your pilots have RimWorld style perks and flaws. Um, so that's a really, really good one to have if you wanted to inject a little bit of depth into your pilots. War effects is why my game looks good. It adds extra lighting effects, extra particle effects, better explosion effects. Uh, it gives you god rays. It gives you all kinds of stuff that makes the game look really modern and pretty. Coyote Mission Pack. This is one of the only things I run that you can't get on the Steam Workshop. Coyote Mission Pack adds like seven or eight more mission types to the default five or six uh, so that you get a little bit more variety. And all the missions in Coyote Mission Pack are procedural, which means, you know that last mission we played where a bunch of pirates tried to assassinate us in the middle of a duel, but they dropped in in front of the enemy team and got into a fight and cut each other apart? That was one of the variations of that mission that can happen right there. Another thing that can happen is you can be attacked by 25 planes. Uh, the enemy can call in with no honor 25 tanks. Uh, like, lots of things can happen. You can get intercepted before you go to the mission, uh, and your, your dropship can get shot down. All kinds of cool stuff happens with this mod. It's a very, very good mod. Uh, cockpit glass. That does exactly what it sounds like. It puts a glass canopy on my cockpit so that water rolls down it when it's raining and you get different atmospheric effects that are more immersive. Yet another mech lab. That's what allows you to customize the hell out of your mechs. You're going to want that one if you're into tinkering. TT Rules AI mod. Goes with yet another mech lab. Uh, this refurbishes the AI. The default AI in MechWarrior Vanilla is really terrible. TT Rules AI mod makes them competent both the enemies and your wingmen. Corn Sound Mod. This one makes the game sound better. Uh, it pulls in a bunch of the sound effects that were made by Microsoft from the previous MechWarrior games uh, in a AAA studio, basically, to make the game sound more immersive. Uh, yet another weapon. That's part of yet another Mech Lab. It adds more weapons to the game. Uh, we've got the compatibility pack. You're gonna need. It's kind of like the Microsoft redistributable. You need this for some mods to work. And so anyways, the mod will tell you if you need it. Armor green. That's why my armor is so readable in my mech. The default vanilla armor screen is terrible. Yet another weapon clan. That adds clan weapons to the game after the clan invasion happens. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Just understand that clan weapons are how you get giant rotary auto cannons that go bu -bu 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 It's basically how you get chain guns, all right? I can't play any game without chain guns. Uh, and then heat gauge. That's why my heat gauge is all colorful and easier to see. And so those are the mods that I'm running right now. Reasonably heavily modded, not too crazily heavily modded. I tried to put Von Biomes in here, but Von Biomes crashes my game over and over and over again, so I just kind of gave up on it. Uh, as a booster, the developers also have an official expansion coming out in about three weeks to add on to the three they've already previously released called The Rise of Rosselhog. And so anyways, you can check that on out as well. But I cannot recommend MechWarrior highly enough. MechWarrior 5 was one of those games that I was like at a 6.5 out of 10 about when it came out. But now, with mods and the DLCs and everything else, dude, I have been binge playing this for so many hours over the last couple weeks. And I just had to tell somebody about it because like I feel like everybody forgot about MechWarrior 5 and yet there's been these industrious modders just hanging out in their attic working on these mods that have basically converted this game into the perfect MechWarrior game so anyways go check the game out go see what's up with it uh, hopefully you have as good of a time as I've been having and I will catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet uh, this I know this was a break from my normal content but I appreciate you all being here. It was a perfect opportunity for me to talk about something that I'm really, really passionate about. There are not many things in life that I'm super into. I like my wife. I like my dogs. I like Warhammer 40k. I like indie games. And like, I like, I, I like Mech Warrior and Battletech. And then other than that, I'm just like this little black hole of joyless nothingness. And so when I get these rare opportunities, to really dive on in and talk about something that like, I like this thing, and I've liked it since I was like 10 years old. I'm gonna take that opportunity. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Take it easy, everybody.